Hello, my name is John Broadwell and I'm Embedded Systems Consultant and Medical Device Development Consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Uh, today we're going to do an interesting project. Uh, we're going to take this slinky, this wire, this serial wombat chip and an Arduino, and we're going to use it to count change. And that's all we're going to use. There's no circuits, there's no loop, uh, basically one piece of wire attached to a slinky. Oh, and we've got a plastic bag at the bottom. We'll see down how why that is in a moment. So I thought this might be a fun project. I was walking through Walmart the other day and walking through the Easter aisle, getting some Easter candy, and saw this slinky. And if you're watching this video, you're probably like me. You know, it's never 100% turned off. And so I looked at that slinky and I thought to myself, if you ran a current through it, you'd get a magnetic field. And then I started thinking, I wonder if you could measure that. So I bought the slinky to find out. But then on the drive home, I started thinking, you're going to need a lot of current for a coil that big. Plus, you're going to have to connect it at both ends, which means it won't be able to do its slinky thing anymore. But then I started thinking, well, it's also a bunch of pieces of metal that have space in between, air in between. They are kind of connected. I wonder if the capacitance changes when it gets longer or shorter. And fortunately, the serial wombat chip that I developed uh, has a capacitive measurement mode that typically we use for capacitive touch, but that in this case we use to measure the capacitance of the slinky. And the basis for that, the Serial Wombat 18AB chip runs on the PIC 24FJ256GA702 microcontroller. And inside of that microcontroller, one of the microchip core independent peripherals is the charge time management unit, the CTMU. And you can see it's got a big old data sheet. It's, uh, you know, 40 some pages of stuff. And it's one of the more sophisticated uh, embedded systems things to set up because it involves a very low power current source, a 55 nanoamp current source. It involves a timer that starts and stops the sampling circuit of the analog to digital converter and then it does the analog to digital conversion and all of this stuff happens and essentially what it does then is by attaching it to the analog pin you get what looks kind of like a bucket that fills up with charge at the end of that you measure that voltage with the analog to digital converter and it gives you an idea of how much capacitance is there if you look up above I did a whole video a couple of years back on how the CTMU works and used a bunch of metaphors of water filling up a measuring cup and things like that. I think it's a really good video. If you're interested in cap touch or capacitive measurement, you might want to check it out. Uh, but today we're talking about the Serial Wombat chip and the way that it ties into Arduino and essentially puts a wrapper around this entire CTMU and all of the stuff so that all you have to do is make a couple of calls to the uh, Arduino library or the Py MicroPython library or the C Sharp library. They all have the exact same interfaces. And uh, you can connect up to the Serial Wombat chip either via UART or I2C uh, to make these measurements. So let's get started and let's see how that works. The first thing we're going to want to do is characterize the system. And in order to do that, we want to be able to see real-time results on a computer. So we're going to go into the Arduino environment, and we're going to go to Examples, Serial Wombat, Bridges, UART to I2C. squared And I'm using a Ciduino Shao, which is based on another microchip product, the SAMD line of 32-bit microcontrollers. Uh, but essentially, in this mode, we're going to use it as a UART to I2C squared converter. So let's upload that sketch to the Arduino now. At present, there's only four connections between the Arduino and the Serial Wombat chip. The two I2C lines that have a pull-up resistor on each, 3.3 uh, volts and ground. Okay, that's finished. So now that the uh, Arduino is acting as an I2C to UART bridge, we can fire up the Serial Wombat panel application on the PC. And we're going to open the port that's attached to the Arduino, which is COM number eight. And I have the slinky hooked up via a wire to pin zero. And so we're going to go to pin zero. And I was really delighted the first time that I tried this because every now and again, you get something that just works 
And this was one of those cases that just worked. So we're gonna configure pin zero to uh, cap touch. And I just hit configure. I used the default charge time of 5,000. Again, if you wanna know what that means, watch the previous reference video. We're gonna say auto sample. Hey, and that's fantastic. 27,000 is kind of right in the middle of our range. So let's see, is that just a fluke or are we getting a response? And if we do our slinky thing here, and you can see it's doing some simple harmonic motion, uh, there is a signal in there. Now that the CTMU, because it works with such small amounts of current and, uh, and capacitance and things, is pretty susceptible to noise, but there is a signal inside of that noise. So let's go to averaging. And we're going to turn this guy up to 500 samples and set it for average. And again, the Serial Wombat chip has the same set of input filters and averaging, outlier exclusion, all that kind of stuff across all of its pin modes. It's a uniform set of code that runs within the microcontroller at the command of the Arduino chip. So we hit that. Okay, now we've got a nice stable looking line. So let's do that again. Let's move him up and we see, yep, he moves up. We move him down and he moves down. So we're definitely getting a capacitive change with the length of the slinky, which is really great. That's what we wanted to see. So the next thing I want to do, I said we're going to count change. And by that, I mean, I have four quarters here. And for us to be able to say we can measure something, we have to be able to get a predictable response and it needs to be a repeatable response. So for right now, I'm going to look at this guy and, you know, again, we've got some, some SMH going on here. We've got our spring constants and just a whole variety of fun stuff that would make for a great uh, final exam question in a high school advanced physics class. And it looks like we've got uh, about 26,900 here. And so we're going to take points at each of the different uh, no quarters, with a quarter, without, oh, I forgot to say one thing. So when we're, when we're using the charge time management unit, we have an A to D that after you average it goes from zero to 65, 535. It's 12 bits internally, but then you average together 64 and you can act like it's a 16 bit number. We wanna come closer to maxing that out. So we're gonna increase the charge time to 10,000. So we're putting twice as many coulombs into the capacitor as previously than measuring the voltage. And the net result of that is that we get a bigger signal with more swing between the points, which is almost always a good thing when you're trying to measure something. And so now we're looking at it again. Uh, right here at the moment, we're getting a value of about 53,000. I looked at some of these before we got on the camera and before I got 52.9 with no quarters in it. And it's coming in very close to that again. So now I'm gonna drop a quarter into the bag. And we can see the string stretches down a little bit. And we can see on that line, the average moved down. It's not, not, didn't move down by much, but we definitely can draw a threshold between the two where we can say, yeah, this is very likely no quarters or this is very likely one quarter. And if we had a little bit of hysteresis on that, we probably can, can lock it in altogether. So there's, uh, Somewhere in the neighborhood of 52,750. You can see over on the other uh, tab here the values that I recorded previously uh, before we did that. If we put another quarter in there, we get more change. We put another quarter in there, we get more change. Put another quarter in there, we get more change. Up to four quarters is what we're going to measure. And I'm going to dampen that for a minute so that we don't get quite so much swing. Then I went into my spreadsheet over here. And I said, okay, what is the midpoint between no quarters and one quarter, between one quarter and two quarters, and had Excel calculate those for me. So what we want to do now is create an Arduino sketch that tells us how many quarters are in the bag based on the length which drives the capacitance of the slinky. So, and I cooked one of these uh, beforehand. And... Some of the features that you're seeing here require version 2.1.2 of the firmware, which is going to be released uh, in April of 2024. So you're getting a little bit of a sneak preview of both the Arduino library and the 2.1.2 uh, firmware for the Serial Wombat 18AB chip. So if you go under File, Examples, and this assumes you've downloaded the Serial Wombat library through the uh, 
Arduino environment. 18AB, touch, and slinky length. And so what we've got in here is this Arduino sketch. We're saying we've got a serial wombat on serial wombat chip on 6B. Uh, we're going to assign the slinky pin as pin zero. We're going to instantiate a serial wombat chip and instantiate a serial wombat 18AB uh, cap touch pin mode that we'll put on pin zero. We're going to keep an global variable that keeps track of how much money is in the bag so that we can see and print out a new value when it changes. We're going to start up the I squared C bus. We're going to initialize our serial wombat chip. We're going to uh, initialize serial so that we can output a delay. We'll give it 10 seconds. We're going to do a version check uh, to make sure that the serial wombat chip is responding. That code is on the other tab to keep it from confusing newbies. Uh, and then we're going to say slinky begin. The slinky again is a serial wombat 18AB cap touch pin mode. And we're going to put that value of 10,000. That's the charge time and 10 samples delay between uh, samples. Don't worry about that too much. There's a whole video up here on how to configure the cap touch pin mode, including making it act like buttons and hold times and all kinds of useful stuff. Uh, and then we're going to come in here and we're going to average 500 samples. That's how we get the nice clean signal out of the noise and enable the generalized input processing that turns on that averaging. We'll do an initial read and run it through a counts to money function. So the counts to money function is quite simple. Uh, essentially, it uses those magic values that we discovered before and returns either 0, 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, or 100 cents based on what's in the bag and how much it stretches out the slinky. And we just go into a loop and we keep measuring the capacitance and uh, comparing it against the, private, the previous value. If it's different, then we print it out. So let's upload this sketch. Actually, we'll have to close the Serial Wombat application, panel application first so we can get that COM port. And then let's go to Sketch, Upload, and we'll put that sketch in. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these quarters out of the bag while that is uploading. Okay, the sketch is uploaded. It found a firmware version 9.12, which I'll change to 2.12 after it's out of the final development and run through unit tests. And it output a zero. And that zero means that there are no quarters in the bag. Let's put a quarter in the bag. And we'll give it a second to run its averages and see the difference. And I got nothing. All right, so it looks like maybe our calibration values are off or drifted a little bit. Let's throw another quarter in there and just see what happens. All right, it found at that time 50 cents. Throw another one in there. All right, 75, it found it. And we'll put a whole dollar in there and see what happens. All right, we got a dollar. And we'll wait just a moment and see if it stays stable there, make sure it doesn't move. I'm going to accelerate the video a little bit so that you guys don't have to watch nothing happening. Um, and we did not get any movement. So let's go back here and let's pull three of the quarters out, see if it goes back to 25. And we may get some crazy values here because it's swinging a lot. One of the ways we could improve this algorithm, we're taking a fixed number of samples, but that doesn't necessarily line up with the harmonic motion of this guy. So we're getting a sine wave and a quarter or a sine wave and a half, which probably is varying the count a little bit. And again, that 25 is having a little bit of a trouble. Let's break that, that motion and let it settle out a little bit and see if it gets any better. Could be that calibration point needs moved a little bit. We'll pull it down just a little bit, a little more. Yeah, so that's that one's weighing a little bit light. If we put in a second quarter. All 
So it does get to the 50. So it looks like her 25 cent calibration mark probably needs adjusted a little bit. But we're definitely getting a good signal. And so this has been a lot of fun. Like I was saying before, an ideal uh, algorithm for this would look for a peak on the simple harmonic motion, take averages until we hit another peak, and then just average out that whole thing. Because if you get, you know, one and a half or one and a quarter of a cycle, it's going to be biased towards either the high or the low part that it got as the extra part of the, uh, the simple harmonic motion wave, the sine wave. So that's about all I got from today. I was really happy about this. I bought this thing on, you know, at six o'clock on Monday, came home, tried it. It worked the very first time to give me a signal that was proportional. And, uh, you know, now I put together this video the very next day. And really feel really good about this because, you know, I mean, I'm getting to the point with the serial Wombat chip where I've got a lot of different pin modes that just work and just do things. So if you haven't seen it before, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Uh, all of the firmware is on GitHub. The MicroPython library that supports it, the Arduino C++ library, the C Sharp library, this application, all of that stuff is open source. And there are kits available to buy that have a, this PCB that you see that comes with everything that you need to get started. So, you know, if you're using the CapTouch uh, mode for anything, let me know. I don't get a lot of requ uh, requests about this one, maybe because it works really good, maybe because nobody's using it. Uh, I do know that a few of you guys have bought the uh, CapTouch PCB uh, boards that I have available on Amazon to uh, to interface to this thing. So leave me a comment down below if you're using the cap touch, what you're using it for, or if you have any feature requests to, to improve this, make it better. It's always getting better. You know, prior to version 2.12, that averaging uh, capability was not in there. You know, so I integrated the, the generic abstract input processing into that pin mode. So, you know, there's always room for improvements. And, you know, I've got more than... I've got most of what I wanted to do uh, as far as infrastructure into the chip, and I've still got half the flash left. So there's a lot of room for feature improvements. So definitely do that. Check me out on Instagram. Uh, you get updates on some things that are maybe not a big enough deal to do a YouTube video about, but periodic updates. And other than that, just have fun. Keep making stuff. Send me some pictures of your projects so that I can feature them in a future video or on Instagram. Have fun. Keep making stuff. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485 as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.